Hey YouTubers, today um, it's been a week since I posted my video about um, making my car kind of off-roadish and I promised this week I was going to have tires on uh, based on you know you guys input and what I decided to do. That hasn't happened. Um, this is tax week, IRS took all my money, blew the budget on that. But what I do have for you today not 100% disappointment, I have this, which I'm gonna put on my car. So, if you read the subtitle, you already know what's in the box. This is a trailer hitch um, that I bought for my Q5 over a month ago, and it's still in the box. Like, this part ripped when I was trying to take it out of the car because it's very heavy. I think this thing in the box probably weighs about 60 pounds, probably a little more than that but not a big deal the point is I'm gonna try to put this on the Q5 today <clears throat> sorry I'm gonna try to put this on a Q5 today and uh, you're gonna come along on the journey with me so as usual if you like the videos I make click like so that I know that I should make more of the same and if you want to see more videos of the same when I do make them hit subscribe let's get into it first part of this process is going to be the unboxing. I'm gonna open this box up and see what it is I bought because even though I purchased this over a month ago, I have no idea what's in the box. Um, I actually have no clue. It could be a box of bricks for all I know. So let's open it up, see if it looks like a trailer hitch. And then when I'm done with that, I'm gonna go outside, jack the car up and see if it looks like a trailer hitch that could go onto my car. So let me get into this. box there's a lot more box than there is trailer hitch um, I have one, two, three cubes of styrofoam and mounting hardware I bought a trailer hitch a while ago a few years ago and I mounted it on my Mercedes didn't do a video on that but it came with pretty much the same thing that I'm seeing here. It's very similar wires and springs and some flanges and the nuts and bolts. I don't know if I'll use the nuts and bolts that came with this. Um, in the past, I've found that if you buy cheap stuff, they send you cheap hardware. And I would much rather spend a little bit of money, uh, a little bit extra money, get some really nice uh, stainless steel hardware. I don't know. We'll see how this goes together. If it looks like it's gonna be sturdy enough for what I'm gonna be doing, I'll do it like that, but more than likely, I'm gonna end up going to the hardware store and replicating these nuts and bolts, but in a harder grade. We'll see. Now, let me lay everything out on the table. This is the box of the hardware, and I'm gonna show you what's in the box. What I'm looking at that you can't see is this. That is the trailer hitch. Just wrapped up all really nice and full. So let me cut this box so I can get the trailer hitch out of the box. More styrofoam. Styrofoam wrap with uh, Money making sure this thing was well protected. Like, I've bought electrical components that weren't wrapped this good in the past. So, this is what I got. This thing looks really narrow. It looks really narrow. Um, so, I bought this on Amazon and it was listed as being guaranteed to fit my car. So I'm guessing that if it doesn't fit my car, it would be some level of guarantee. Um, with of this, if 
from one end of the flange to the other is right at 40 and 3 eighths of an inch wide. So from flange to flange is 40 and 3 eighths of an inch wide. And then the height of it, from where it mounts to the chassis, to where it's gonna be hanging down below the car is 11, I'd say about 11 and an eighth of an inch. We'll call it 11 and a quarter inch. Um, so, of course, it's gonna be mounted the other way around. <laughs> Getting my workout today. So it's gonna be mounted like this, and this is gonna be mounted up in the chassis, and then this is gonna hang down 11 and a quarter inches. Now, then there's this part. They were nice enough to give me Huh. Yeah, they were nice enough to give me this um, pin. Oh, I see how it is. Just a little bit of a puzzle. All right. All right, all right. So, we won't be using this today. Which, already, I can see a problem. You, you see that? This pin, when you put it on here, it's supposed to snap in place and hold. It's not supposed to be able to just go in there. Already I'm concerned about quality. That's one problem. The other problem is that there is a huge roach in this. I'm gonna show you right now. Like it's literally in there. I don't like roaches. I'm afraid of roaches. This bad boy probably came all the way from China. This is a Chinese roach. I wonder if he speaks Chinese. Like if I set him free, I wonder if he'll be able to talk to the American roaches. I have the hitch laying under the car, right about where it will be mounted. Um, and I'm already seeing, first of all, that both uh, mufflers are gonna have to be dropped. Um, quite possibly the entire bumper cover is gonna have to be removed. I'm not sure if that's gonna happen or if it's not gonna be necessary, but I know for a fact, both mufflers have to drop. So this is centered pretty much where it's gonna be in the car. Um, and it's gonna be a little bit further back, maybe, maybe not, maybe, I don't know, but that's where it's gonna be. So let me show you what's going on under here. Okay, so this is the flange that's gonna have to bolt to the frame of the car. It's got one hole here, and then it's got three more down the side there. And then it's gonna be right here where this muffler is. So this muffler and the one on that side are gonna have to drop down. And if I'm fortunate, I'm gonna be able to bolt this onto the frame up there. See where I'm showing you guys, which you can't really see around, okay. So it's gonna have to bolt to the frame up there. And that means the muffler is gonna have to come out because there's no way to loosen or tighten the bolt up in there with this muffler in place. So I'm gonna have to jack the car up, undo the mufflers. I don't know that I have to disconnect the exhaust. I don't know what would be a good disconnection point for me anyway. Um, but if I can loosen up the uh, exhaust, the exhaust hangers, and get this exhaust to drop down about six to eight inches, I could probably work my way in there. There are a problem, a couple problems. Um, one, of course, I can't put any bolts or nuts in there with the muffler in place. The other thing is the way this flange is shaped, there is no way to get it above the muffler without the muffler dropping down. So let me jack it up and see. So I got the car jacked up. I got it on jack stands. I didn't get a ton more room. I got about six inches more clearance. My jack isn't the best. My jack stands aren't the best. I bought them when I had a car, not an SUV. It wasn't designed for this, but now I'm gonna try to drop the uh, mufflers.
got the exhaust hangers undone. Pretty straightforward. I sprayed a little bit of lube on there and then got behind it with a pry bar. There's a correct tool used for removing exhaust hangers. It's got like a little fork shape that does like this and pushes it off. If I did exhaust all day, I would buy one. This is a one and done. I'm not spending that kind of money. I used my pry bar and it worked great. I got the exhaust hanger off with very little effort. Um, we'll see how easy it is to put back on. But, so it's one exhaust hanger right here that goes up there. And then over here, same thing. And then up front, well not all the way up front, it's actually just a little bit ahead of the back door. There's another exhaust hanger in the middle of the car that I undid also. And by undoing all of that, I was able to drop this exhaust about a foot. Maybe a little more if I pry it, I don't wanna bend anything, but that's all the leverage I got. Now, now that I've done that, I see what looks like holes where that bracket will mount um, right here, right here. And then another one up there. Um, and then in the middle, there is something else going on. But I'm gonna have to remove this heat shield, which is held on by some 10 millimeter flare nuts so that I can get a better look at what this is right here. Cause I have to figure out what this is and what's the best way to remove it. Heat shield is pretty easy to take out. There are five 10 millimeters flare nuts. Um, it looks like there's four, but there's actually five. So it sits in the car like this. Let me see. Like this. Like this. Yeah. So there are two here that are on the side of the wheel well where the spare tire goes. There is one up here that you won't see that sits right above the uh, muffler. And then there are two on the side here, on the side of the chassis. And once you take those off, you just kind of pull it down and you can wiggle it. So here's the exhaust and it's up in the car like this and you just kind of wiggle it around this way. And then it comes out. And now I'm gonna take everything out of the trunk and see if I can't see those bolts from the top side. I removed some of the stuff. I removed this uh, side panel here. This is where I keep my spare oil. Um, in here is the air compressor, it comes with the vehicle to inflate this tire, so that's how that works. And then there are these cargo straps that are right here. Yeah, they go in right here. They're held in with a T30 Torx, two of them, one on each side, and then there's another one of those up front there. And so now that I have those out and out of the way, this has to come out. The problem is that it's sitting under this piece of plastic, and that piece of plastic is sitting under this rare valance or valance or whatever you want to call it. I don't know if this just pries up. I guess it does. I know on my tour I get just pried up. All you have to do is reach under there and pry it and like that. And then it just comes up. So there's that. Be careful because there is that wire connector for the sensor. So you don't want to mess that up. Now put this on the side like so and now I should be able to get this up and out of the way like so there is this metal piece that goes down here and is held on by this bolt and this bolt um, I'm really really hoping that these two bolts right here are the ones that are coming out through the bottom side of the frame. So on the bottom side of the frame, once I remove that heat shield, you can see that square nut that's welded to the frame. And then that other one right next to it. So you can see these two square nuts and I'm really, really hoping that those bolts on the top side are the mounting bolts for the uh, tow hitch and I'm also really really hoping that there are these bolts right here and the reason why I'm hoping that those are those bolts right there is because if that's what I'm gonna use to mount the tow hitch then I can just remove those bolts 
and then get bolts that are about a half inch longer so that they protrude through the body of the car and then when I screw them all the way in and put this back in place then I can put the tow hitch in from the bottom and put nuts on the end of the bolts to hold it onto the body of the car so let me get the tow hitch um, kind of line it up and see if it's in fact these bolts but before I get ahead of myself, I'm going to loosen this bolt and see if it loosens on the bottom. See if this is what's going straight through the vehicle down to the bottom. Got my little impact. 16 millimeter socket. Goes right down in there. Make sure it's seated before you start ka-chunking. Alright, so that came right out. Kind of. It halfway came out and then it doesn't want to come out the rest of the way. I'm guessing I could probably just ratchet it the rest of the way, but this is the moment of truth. Let me see if that's the bolt that in fact I was looking at from the bottom side. And it is. So as you can see, there's no bolt in there anymore. That's the bolt I just undid. So I'm guessing that this one here is the other side of that bracket. So now the next step in the process is to put that um, tow hitch up here and see if it lines up with those bolt holes because if it does I'm kind of on easy street not a hundred percent but kind of problems problems and more problems so I didn't take off the, the uh, heat shield on this side I figured I would figure out how to mount this on one side and once I got everything fixed on one side then I would take the heat shield off and replicate that on the other side however I put the tow hitch up here and it kind of fits inside the space here. I would have had to cut the bumper cover right here, just make a slit there, and then make a slit here for it to fit all the way flush, but that's not my major problem. My major problem is that these bolt holes are inset. If you look at the rail, you see the bolt hole for the rail is out here, and then the actual tow hitch is about, I'd say, half inch inboard of where that hole is. And then if I go over on this side, on this side, it's lined up with where the hole would be. I mean, none of the holes line up, which that's not a problem. I can drill holes and uh, mount it myself. The problem is that the tow hitch itself is about a little over a quarter inch too narrow. Now, can I modify this tow hitch to make it work on the car? Yes, absolutely. I've done worse. I can definitely modify this, but I bought this tow hitch with the guarantee that it would fit, that I would just be able to put it on there, line up the holes, and then bolt everything up and that is absolutely not the case not by any stretch of the imagination so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go on amazon i'm going to file a claim try to get a return and get this hitch returned if they will take it back then i'm gonna send it back and try to get another one that would work if they're not gonna take it back and i'm pretty much stuck with what i bought then I'm gonna modify it to make it work. This project is dead in the water. I'm gonna take this tow hitch back out, put it back in the box, set it on the side, and put my car back together so I can drive it. This is the end of the video. I'm gonna to try to edit this down and make this as short as possible, simply because it was not a successful video. I don't like making unsuccessful videos. I don't like unsuccessful projects on the whole. So I'm not happy about this situation. Um, but it is a teachable moment. I've learned two things today. Um, the first thing that I learned is that mounting a tow hitch to the back of the Q5 isn't as terribly hard as I had imagined. I thought there would be a lot more going on in the back and the chassis, especially from the in trunk side. As far as getting um, bolt holes mounted and things like that. It's not that bad. It's not easy, but it's not nearly as hard as I thought it would be. And the other thing that I learned today is that just because Amazon guarantees that a part will fit your vehicle, 
doesn't guarantee that part will fit your vehicle. I've purchased a few parts from Amazon before where I've, you can put in the year make and model of your vehicle and then it would say guaranteed fit and it would have a little green thing and I would buy it and sure enough they would fit. This is not one of those cases. I did the exact same thing, put in the year make and model and looked up parts that were guaranteed to fit my car and this particular tow hitch showed up and it doesn't fit. It's nowhere near in the ballpark. Um, so I already filed a claim to try to get it returned or get some kind of restitution for this. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm not going to post the link to that specific website or that specific vendor just yet. Um, just because depending on how they deal with me on this will determine the kind of review that they get. If I can send it back and get another one that does work, and then just bolt it in and show you guys, that would be fantastic. If that's not the case, then my next video on tow hitches is probably gonna be a video on modifying a tow hitch to work that doesn't work. So anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy your weekend.